Hi guys, it's Rob from Royal Balls. Many of you may have seen the collaboration video that I did with Richard where I looked at my top three morphs but um, also looked at the genes involved in the morphs and how to recognise them and that got uh, a very good feedback. So uh, since we're pretty much in coronavirus lockdown here in uh, Malaysia uh, we're not supposed to go out, uh, the supermarkets are open and you can go do essential shopping uh, but uh, offices are closed, uh, other retail shops are closed, um, pubs, clubs, nightclubs all closed and uh, there will be imposed a, uh, a curfew, people are not supposed to go out unless they absolutely have to. Um, it's kind of weird being able to phone up KFC and order a takeaway and get it delivered to your gate, but you can't go to KFC and eat it at KFC. Um, so, not uh, too much of a hardship. Our supermarkets are still uh, fairly well stocked. Um, there's none of the panic buying that I see on TV from the UK and the States. Um, I was at the supermarket uh, at the beginning of the week doing the weekly shopping and that's all we did. Uh, I didn't have to stock up and uh, they still had toilet rolls, they still had hand sanitizer, uh, the chemists still have uh, face masks if you uh, need to buy them. So um, business as usual but you just have to stay at home which gives me the perfect opportunity uh, to bring you guys into the snake room and uh, do some more of that uh, looking at my collection, looking at my morphs and looking at the genes uh, that go to make up those morphs, how to recognize them and what genes go well together when we start to stack genes on top of each other. Just a disclaimer up front, I am not an expert by any means. Uh, some of the genes that I've worked with for years here, vanilla being a classic example, I still struggle to identify in combos. Uh, sometimes I look at a snake and go, yeah, that's nice and bright, that's got vanilla in it. That's the way that I do some of my genetic identifications. So I wanted to start a discussion on uh, stacking genes and what I see when I stack genes, the, uh, the goals and what I'm trying to aim for and achieve when I I put genes together. It gets harder and harder to identify genes in combination. Uh, that's the way that the industry is going. Um, specific genes added to snakes to produce a specific look rather than just stacking genes one on top of the other in a kind of random approach and um, seeing what pops out. Uh, I think those days are gone now. Uh, but the top end snakes with a specific look and specific genes are still in high demand. So if you see me make a mistake, which I frequently do, uh, please jump into the comments and um, don't bash me, but um, go ahead and correct me uh, because I certainly still do make mistakes. The first part we'll be looking at some fairly simple combos. We'll start off by looking at uh, some codominant genes, Orange Dream, um, Calico, uh, Lesser we take a look at, and then uh, we'll take a look at Leopard and Mojave, some of the uh, darker morphs that I have in my collection. We'll go through all those and then it starts to get a little bit more interesting when we start to stack genes into my own specific projects where we start to look at stacking genes into recessive projects, in particular clown. And I really enjoyed doing the clown part. So um, come along for the ride. Like I say, I'm not the world's expert, uh, but um, I'll show you what I can see and uh, where I'm headed. And if you want to jump in, comment or correct me, uh, please go ahead and do so. So this little shy girl here is Orange Dream, just a single copy of Orange Dream. You have seen her before, but let's uh, focus in on what Orange Dream actually does. Um, it is a pattern reducer. You can see that the alien heads are much reduced and along the flanks here uh, we get some blushing uh, some really bright yellows alongside the uh, black banding here, highlighting there. A little bit muddy along the sides. The head stamp, there you can see the typical orange dream head stamp, a very dark head stamp but with some orange blushing. So this is just a single copy of orange dream compared to a normal uh, you can see the uh, pattern reduction the reduction in the alien heads 
Uh, you can see the normal still has quite strong alien heads, uh, whereas the orange dream, uh, a little bit enchy like in terms of the banding and the lost alien heads, just a few dots left here and there. Um, generally a brighter snake, uh, definitely more orange than the than the normal by comparison. So that's a single copy of Orange Dream and when we add Yellow Belly to Orange Dream you can see that you get a very very similar snake but much brighter. So the Orange Dream is the girl that's trying to run away here. Uh, this is the single copy of Orange Dream and this is Orange Dream Yellow Belly which brightens things up quite considerably. Uh, you can see it makes the uh, dorsal very very dark and high contrast. The head stamp is very very similar, maybe slightly brighter and you can see the blushing on the sides of the Orange Dream Yellow Belly is much more intensified. So two genes that work really really well together side by side. Orange Dream in this girl here and Orange Dream Yellow Belly this little guy here. Okay now we're going to take Orange Dream and add Calico and Calico is the gene that uh, pulls white up the up the sides, up the belly of the snake there. If you look at the flanks of the snake you can see the salt and peppering going about halfway up the snake, uh, whitening the snake out and it is getting brighter with age. Some fantastic uh, almost salt and pepper like colouring in here. The head stamp is again very similar, typical orange dream and you can see that Calico and orange dream reduces the pattern even further a very very strong high contrast dorsal on this calico boy and you can see the extreme yellows around the margins of the dark line very very bright yellow next to the orange so this is orange dream calico and for my money calico doesn't really work very well with orange dream uh, it's too dark and it spoils some of the effect that Orange Dream has. Orange Dream has uh, some really nice blushing which you still have on this guy here. You see some blushing there uh, but you have lost a lot of the blushing effect because of the white sides. So not a huge fan of Calico in Orange Dream although this guy is a nice example of Orange Dream. Let's just put him alongside the original Orange Dream so that you can see what I mean. So this is the original Orange Dream female and you can see that Calico has actually darkened up this guy a little bit. It's made it a bit more higher contrast. You can see the difference in the pattern and also the white sides coming up here. And as I said before, uh, for my money, um, this is the nicer snake than this one. I think Calico is not really a good choice in Orange Dream. So let me follow up on that. Uh, the calico gene or sugar gene is the uh, the gene that lightens up the side of the snake. So let me show you some snakes where calico does work. Okay so what we have here is calico in a different combination and this is a pastel lesser. Lesser being the same as butter and you can see that the uh, lesser lightens up the browns and uh, the yellows on the alien head here so you get a much lighter snake overall and when you add pastel to that you get the typical pastel head stamp, the blushing and if I can, if I can just catch the white lips there you see the white lips uh, typical of pastel white lips on the pastel She's showing them off nicely there. And you'll see that Calico has exactly the same effect on the sides of this snake. Uh, it's producing white sides which uh, climb up and reduce the pattern along the sides of the snake which climb higher and get lighter with age. So this snake is improving with age and this is a combination that I feel 
uh, and again it's a personal choice of course but I feel Calico works much much better in these lighter combinations than it does in the darker combinations. The white sides here complement the, uh, the, the, the much much lighter colours, yellows and browns, almost pastel colours here on this uh, pastel lesser. So this is a combination where I think calico or sugar uh, works much better than it does in the uh, much darker orange dream. So this is pastel, lesser, calico. Another example of where calico works really really well this is a bumblebee calico which is a pastel spider and calico combined it's the same line of calico and you can see that on the bumblebee the uh, white sides are much much stronger much higher much more enhanced and cleaner than on the uh, previous snake that we looked at so calico is having a huge influence on this snake so how do we get to a snake like this using just the three genes, pastel, spider and calico. So this is a spider, single gene spider and you can see that we're getting the pattern reduction that we need uh, to produce that bumblebee calico and we're enhancing the fact that spider already has these very strongly blushed out sides. You can see the white is already starting to climb up the sides of the spider anyway even without calico in the mix so calico is going to strongly influence this and enhance that pattern. So that's a feature of the spider that calico was made for. We're taking a characteristic of the spider, the fact that it has these white blushed out sides here, and we're going to enhance that with calico to bring it up the sides. So this is the spider. And we'll put that back next to the next to the all white snake and you can see the, uh, the pattern resemblance from the base snake to the snake that we're trying to create. So spider is what's giving this pattern and calico is what's giving the white sides and we're already starting to see white sides on the original spider anyway. Uh, so this is a great combination. Obviously the bumblebee has pastel in it to brighten it and make it this uh, yellow colour uh, but you can see how we're taking the base spider and enhancing it with both pastel and calico in order to produce an effect that really is just an enhancement of the original snake so these genes were born to work with each other. I don't have an example of a bumblebee but I do have an example of a pastel warmer, warmer being a very similar to spider. Let's take a look at that so you can see the effect that pastel has on the original spider. Of course typically uh, this girl is in shed and she's hissing at me but this is a pastel warmer so you can see what effect the pastel has on the original darker colored spider. A warmer is very similar to spider. You can see the spider-like pattern along the flanks of this girl. And the pastel is what's lightening it up. And in this version, the, uh, the calico bumblebee, it's even lighter still. So three simple genes that work really, really well together. Let's put them all side by side so that you can see the progression of the genes. So here we are, all three, all together. The spider on the right, the pastel warmer in the middle, which is adding the pastel and brightening up the animal. And then adding calico to whiten up the sides and make the snake even brighter. So we go spider, pastel warmer or pastel spider or bumblebee to the calico bumblebee, which is the white snake here. So one gene, two genes, three genes. 
Okay guys, so that's some of the classic genes that uh, I'm working with, the, uh, the lighter coloured genes. Let's go ahead and have a look at some of the uh, darker morphs that I'm working with and a couple of genes that, uh, that are fairly common too, uh, Leopard and Mojave. Look at some of the characteristics in, uh, in those morphs and what the genes look like when you start to stack them on top of each other. Let's take a look at a darker combination. This is cinnamon, uh, which gives the nice uh, dark coloration, the uh, browns, you see the head stamp there, and Mojave which gives these alien heads here and typically Mojave gives a very distinctive floating pattern to the alien heads. Normally the alien heads that are attached down at the belly they, they, they're like teardrops but in Mojave we tend to get these floating or detached alien heads here. Um, the only other gene that does that is the leopard gene but leopard as we see here in this alien head here leopard tends to join them all up so how do you tell that you have Mojave as opposed to leopard so this is my leopard champagne just for comparison and you can see the difference that leopard makes in this pattern here uh, you see how it extends the alien heads so Mojave makes them float and Leopard then extends them horizontally okay so you can tell the difference in combination between Mojave and Leopard Leopard gives you the floating effect but also extends the alien heads along the body whereas Mojave just tends to make the alien heads float so what happens when you get Leopard and Mojave you get a whole heap of elongated connected alien heads which are floating free of the belly very typical of both Mojave and Leopard so that is a complementary combination and this is a Super Pastel Leopard Mojave male or Scorch male and you can see the very strong dorsal line that's also brought out by the Leopard Mojave combination and the very strong pastel colours because this is super pastel so it's a greenish or olive coloured snake but it's the alien heads here that give away the Leopard Mojave combo okay now let me just throw in something that's a little easier to handle um, this is a cinnamon Mojave um, offspring from the previous big girl that you saw but this has Enchi mixed in it and you can see the effect that Enchi has in terms of brightening the animal so Enchi here is definitely a uh, brightening gene here uh, but again you can see Mojave causes these floating alien heads and Enchi actually makes them run up over the dorsal in this banded pattern so you can see the effect of Enchi and Mojave and the colour of this snake is from the cinnamon and you can see the rich chocolate coloured head on this girl. Uh, that's cinnamon. So this is the cinnamon Enchi Mojave. I think a critical thing to note here is that while some of these genes are uh, fairly common genes, they're in common circulation, many people will have them in their collections. Um, even these genes, when you start to mix them in certain combinations, uh, will express themselves in a different way. It gets more and more difficult with more and more genes available to see what's actually in there because the expression of even these fairly common genes tends to vary depending upon what you mix it with. Mojave doesn't always have such a strong expression in terms of alien heads. This is a banana warmer and it's also Mojave and you can see the Mojave expressed in this banana warmer by these dots. That is the effect of Mojave in this banana warmer. The two genes that it's mixed with are so strong that Mojave just puts a few little dots back into the snake as opposed to having the floating alien heads in this cinnamon enchi girl here. So depending upon what you put with Mojave the outcome can vary as it does with many other genes.
They vary depending upon what you put them with. BMW, Banana Mojave Warmer, and this is Cinnamon Mojave Enchi. As a hobby breeder, you will always have the advantage of knowing what the genes in the parents were, and uh, that should always be the starting point if you have that option. Uh, if you know what the uh, parent genetic combination was, you can work out what the possible combinations are in the offspring. It's very, very difficult if somebody puts a snake on the table uh, without any other information and says what genes are in this animal. It is always best to uh, know what the parents are so that you can work out the combinations. And even then, uh, you can still sometimes struggle. I know that I do. Um, so again, as a hobby breeder, you have the advantage of not only knowing what the parents are, but you can also put the uh, siblings from a clutch of eggs side by side, and that way you can start to see differences in the siblings and start to work out what the different genetic combinations are. So and no discussion of dark genes and Mojave would be complete without showing the GHI Mojave. So this is a classic combination the uh, GHI is a very dark gene and all that remains of Mojave are these little ghost-like fingerprints down the side but again you can still see that classic Mojave pattern in this guy. Of course it affects the the dorsal the dorsal is very very bright coloured the snake overall is extremely dark but you can still see the faint Mojave fingerprints so that's what Mojave does, that's how you recognize Mojave in combinations. You're looking for floating alien heads, depending upon the combination that you put it with, or in the case of the banana Mojave warmer that we just looked at, uh, you're looking for Mojave to put dots back into the snake where there were none in the first place. So this is GHI Mojave, a classic combination. And a final combination that I want to show you, another dark morph, just to show you that I do work with darker morphs and genes. Um, this is Super Sable Pinstripe, and I think you can see uh, on the pattern here, you can see that the animal is Pinstripe, but you can also see what Sable does in modifying the Pinstripe. Pinstripe is again another one of those genes that is extremely strong, and in most cases the best that we can hope to do is to modify the pattern rather than change it completely. And you can see that the sable has darkened up the animal and also given it a, a dorsal stripe here that has an almost camouflage pattern down the flanks, which is why this is the camel sable. And you can contrast that with this uh, lemon blast. Uh, again, lemon blast is pastel pinstripe and you can see the classic uh, pinstripe pattern in this girl here um, she is paradoxed you can see the paradoxing in here she's quite shy but this is lemon blast and you can see the uh, the pinstripe pattern in here which is obvious now in this girl too so these are both pinstripe this is pastel pinstripe and this is super sable pinstripe just to show you the effect that you can have on pinstripe pinstripe being a dominant gene that is, again, one of those genes that um, you can modify, but very rarely can you change it completely. So that's the first part, guys. Um, those are some of the uh, co-dominant genes in my collection and some of the morphs that I'm working with. I hope you enjoyed that. It gets a little bit more complicated in the next part. And then part three, we'll concentrate on some of my recessive projects where things get really interesting, but also quite difficult to identify all the genes involved. So don't forget to share, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.